Dr. Joe here. Now, someone got in touch with me and wanted me to talk about chronic venous insufficiency. Apparently, it's also called cancos these days on the internet. So, we're not going to go into the reasons why the person wanted me to talk about it. Uh, but it's my job to oblige, so I'm going to talk about it. So, what are you going to get from this very video? Well, I'm going to define chronic venous insufficiency for you. I'm also going to talk about the risk factors that are associated with chronic venous insufficiency. I'm also going to talk about the symptoms and then the management of chronic venous insufficiency. But as far as the management is concerned, I'm going to just focus on lifestyle modifications. I'm not going to talk about the kind of things that we do in the hospital, okay? That's for another day. And guess what? I'm going to try and do this under 10 minutes. So the pressure is on. Okay, so what is uh, chronic venous insufficiency? Well, your veins, they've got one job. Okay, one job. And their job is to take blood from the tissues and direct it back to the heart. That is their job. Take blood back to the heart. Now, if for whatever reason, which we're going to be talking about, depending on the risk factors here, if for whatever reason, the structural integrity of the vein or the valves that are inside the vein, if it's compromised, then of course, the vein is not going to do the job properly. That means the vein has become incompetent as it were, okay? So when the veins of the lower extremities have become incompetent, are doing their job, then, and if it lasts for weeks, months, and years, that becomes chronic venous insufficiency. So that's the definition. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the risk factors that will predispose you to developing chronic venous insufficiency. I've got about nine here to share with you. The first one is age. As we get older, tissues weaken. And of course, that will include the tissues of the veins of the leg, if they weaken, then they're going to become incompetent. And that raises your risk of developing the problem. Number two, previous clot in the leg. Usually the clot occurs in the deep veins of the leg. Obviously with treatment, the clot is going to dissolve over time, but the presence of the clot damages the structural integrity of that very vein. So even when the clot is dissolved, uh, the damage will have been done and that raises your risk of developing chronic venous insufficiency in future. Uh, that's number two. Number three is sedentary lifestyle. Sitting down all the time is bad for your health all around. So please move, okay, because that is a risk factor for developing the problem. Number four is obesity. Obesity increases the intra-abdominal pressure. And that means the veins of the pelvis and the legs cannot drain themselves properly. Uh, and of course, that raises your risk. So the increase in intra-abdominal pressure is not good for venous drainage back to the heart. So you're gonna end up with pulling off blood in the legs. So that's number four. Number five is diabetes. There isn't a lot to say here about diabetes other than the fact that diabetes damages blood vessels and that includes the veins so that's diabetes number six is family history of chronic venous insufficiency if your mom your dad your grandparents and great grandparents if they had a problem that raises your risk of developing chronic venous insufficiency it is not a given but it raises your risk so that's number six Number seven is previous leg injury. Any trauma to the leg, if the trauma affected the veins of the leg, then of course the structural integrity of that vein is also gonna be affected. And in future, uh, that will affect the ability of the vein to drain itself or themselves, uh, depending on how many veins were damaged, and uh, that raises your risk of developing chronic venous insufficiency. So that's number seven. Number eight is smoking. Smoking, just like diabetes, damages blood vessels. That's all I'll say there, okay? And of course, that includes the veins. So that is smoking. Um, number nine, the presence of pelvic tumors. 
and I'm going to use women here as an example. A lot of young women, uh, sometimes they end up with, you know, huge ovarian tumors or huge fibroids. Now, just like obesity, when you have a huge tumor in the pelvis, like a huge ovarian tumor or a big fibroid, um, that's going to increase the intra-abdominal pressure, which means the veins of the pelvis and the legs will find, uh, find it difficult to drain themselves, okay? An increase in intra-abdominal pressure due to the presence of pelvic tumors. Now, until we operate on it because we can surgically operate on uh, pelvic tumors, tumors of the ovary, we do that every day. Uh, fibroids, we do that every day. Uh, until uh, it, the, the tumor is surgically operated on to relieve the pressure, uh, that will raise your risk of developing uh, chronic venous insufficiency. So once we do that, once the pressure is relieved, then uh, that reduces your risk, if that makes sense, okay? So I've got the nine uh, risk factors here. I'll go over them again. Age, previous clot in the leg, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, diabetes, family history, previous leg injury, smoking, and the presence of pelvic tumors. Now, the more of these risk factors you have, the higher your risk, okay? Uh, if you have just one risk factor, then you could get away with it. But obviously, if you are packing three, four, five risk factors, then your risk of developing chronic venous insufficiency increases exponentially. So, those are the risk factors. Let's talk about the symptoms of chronic venous insufficiency. I've got seven to discuss with you. The first one is leg swelling. Obviously, if you have pooling of blood because the veins are incompetent, they cannot drain themselves properly, uh, then the leg is going to be swollen. You know, the other thing is that fluid will seep out into surrounding tissues, and uh, when you wear shoes, uh, you're going to end up with a muffin top around your shoe, okay, around your shoe edge. So I suppose that's probably what you call cankles, maybe, I don't know. Uh, the internet has a new uh, terminology, cankles. So leg swelling, oh, that's uh, symptom number one. And uh, symptom number two is leg ulcers. This has to do with the supply of oxygen and nutrients to the, uh, the skin. If the skin of the legs they're not getting adequate oxygen or nutrients, then they're going to become friable and they're prone to in injury. And of course, you can then develop ulcers very easily that way. So that's number two. Number three, burning or tingling sensation. This again has to do with the supply of oxygen and nutrients, but in particular, in this case, to the nerves that are supplying the skin. If they are affected, if they're not getting adequate oxygen and nutrients, they will manifest, it could manifest as burning or tingly sensation, okay? So that's number three. Number four, skin discoloration, again, has to do with the nutrition of the skin, the oxygen supply, uh, the color, you know, it comes in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, it could be purple, it could be dusky brown, uh, it could be just be dusky, uh, not very attractive color of the skin. Right, number five is flaking or itchy skin. Flaking or itchy skin will have to do with the same thing, supply of oxygen and nutrients. And if the skin is not getting adequate nutrition, then it's gonna flake very easily, okay? So that's number five. Number six, heaviness in the legs. When there is pooling of blood in the legs and fluid is also seeping out into surrounding tissues, the legs are gonna feel heavy. So that's number six. Number seven, leathery skin. Again, has to do with the blood supply. Uh, you know, if, if, if the skin is deprived of adequate nutrition, oxygen over time, then um, uh, it's gonna become leathery. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to the management of chronic venous insufficiency. And like I said before, I'm going to focus on the lifestyle here. I'm not going to talk about the things that we do in the hospital, in conventional medicine. This is just lifestyle management, okay? You know me, I love lifestyle stuff. <laughs> so what's the first thing you can do to uh, manage this problem? Well, the first thing you can do is elevate the legs. But the most important point here is you need to elevate the legs such that they are raised above the level of the heart, okay? So your legs really have to be well there. 
and uh, you want to do that for an hour at least that will help to drain the veins of the leg and return the blood to the heart okay so that will help number two walk Walk, my favorite exercise. <laughs> you know, walking is underrated. Um, it, it, it works here, okay? Walking is the thing. Walk, because when you walk, the muscles of the leg are gonna help you with a pumping action to get venous returns for the blood to return back to the heart. Walk, please. I love it, and you should. Number three, calf raises, okay? Calf raises. So you do the calf raises, same thing, just like with walking, the muscles of the leg, they're gonna, uh, when you do this, they're gonna, that's gonna induce a pumping action that will uh, uh, encourage the return of blood to the heart through the vein. Number four that you can do, the fourth thing you can do is lose weight, okay? Lose weight, where you have a lot of weight, that's a lot of intra-abdominal pressure uh, on the pelvic veins and that dovetails to a lot of pressure on the veins of the legs as well So lose the weight, please Number five Compression stockings. This is very very good actually Compression stockings um, Yeah, they they work a treat the whole idea behind that is you they, They're gonna help to pump, you know blood back to the heart. It's, you have the graduated ones. They're, they're different types there are some that are graduated, that is to say, they are tighter at the level of the ankles and then the tightness reduces as you get to the thighs. Um, just get any. Number six, smoking cessation. Stop smoking. I know it's not easy. Uh, get yourself, get in touch with a smoking cessation service and they will help you out. Okay, they will. Smoking damages blood vessels and uh, you really want to stop the habit. Number seven, the seventh thing you can do for treatment of chronic venous insufficiency is to control your diabetes. If you're diabetic, please do so. I did a video series in the summer of 2023, eight videos where I showed you how to reverse your type two diabetes. Not type one, okay, type one is irreversible. Type two diabetes, how you can reverse it. The videos are there, they are free for you to watch. So do that, control your diabetes because diabetes damages blood vessels. Uh, diabetes is not good for blood vessels at all. So uh, do that, that's the seventh thing you can do. So that's your lot as far as lifestyle is concerned. In conventional medicine, we have things like sclerotherapy where they will inject a sclerosant into the veins uh, to sort of damage the veins as it were. Uh, you also have a stripping of the veins so they can strip the veins there's thermal ablation as well. So there are all sorts of things that are done on the surgical side to deal with the problem. But this stuff here, okay, they might look like, you know, they won't do a lot, but they do help, okay? They do help. So uh, take advantage of what I've just said here and do so, please, okay? Implement them and you'll be home and dry. So do you know anyone who has this problem or do you suffer from it yourself? Uh, please do let me know in the comment section. Um, I'm hoping that you got some value from this very video. And uh, if you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please like the video and also please share this video with your friends, family and colleagues. Questions, comments down below. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I did, okay? That's it for this video. Until next time. Well, this is Dr. Joe Sidey. Ah. Uh,